Hi, I'm Sean McGivern with Kansas City, Kansas Community College. Uh, today we're going to talk about how to install an interior door. This door right here is an interior door, and we're going to walk through and talk through the process of installing this door. Uh, one thing, before we install a door, we have to know a couple things. Is the rough opening the correct size for the actual door? Uh, it just so happens that this, this door right here is definitely an interior door. So this is a door that would go from like the hallway to a bedroom or from the hallway to a bathroom. It's not an exterior door. So what I have to do is I got to check my door size. And what I'm going to do is just measure across the door here and I'm going to see that this door is actually 30 inches, which is 2 foot 6 inches. Okay. Now, my rough opening has got to be 2 inches wider than the actual width of my door, which is what I just measured. The width on this door is 2 foot 6, and that's a standard size door. The height on a standard size door for a residence, like a home or an apartment complex, uh, is going to be 6 foot 8, which is 80 inches. And that's the standard size for an interior door and some of the uh, standard sizes for exterior doors. So uh, I checked the door size. Now I got to check my opening. And I'm going to measure from side of uh, rough opening to side. And it's 32 inches. So that means that this rough opening is two inches larger than the actual width of my door. So that, that's good. Now the next thing we have to check is our height. And if you're doing an interior door, from the, what you want on your height is from the floor to the top of the rough opening up here needs to be about 83 inches. So I'm going to check that and I'm going to see that it's uh, about 82 and a half. So that's, that's pretty good. We want 83 inches. So we have plenty of room to clear the actual door. Now, before I go and, and start installing the door, what I want to do is I want to check a couple things. I want to check my floor. I want to make sure that my floor is level. So level means a horizontal check for, uh, for level. Uh, plumb is a vertical check. So here is, this is plumb. I'm checking vertically to see if something is plumb. If I'm going to check something horizontally, I'm going to check and see if it's level. So we've checked that. Then the next thing we want to do is we want to make sure our opening is somewhat square. It doesn't have to be perfectly square, but it needs to be as close as possible. So with a framing square, th this door is, is partially put in place. So I can demonstrate a couple things to you. Um, what I would do is I'd check my opening and I'd see if it's actually square with the, a, a good framing square. And I just let, set up in the corners and make sure that I've got a good 90 degree in this corner and a good 90 degree in this corner. And that would be on both sides of the rough opening. i got to check it, okay, with a good framing square. doesn't matter how I orientate this, either blade side up or tongue side down. It doesn't matter, just as long as I check it and check it properly. And I tuck it in the corner all the way up against the wood and I see if I have a whole lot of gap and I don't. I have barely just a little bit of gap for it to swing. So that means that's relatively pretty darn square. Uh, now, as we progress on, the, the one thing that we talk about when we're installing doors is if I look at my floor down here and I check for level. I'm checking to see if the floor is level and if it's not, I want to find out which side here is the high side. Because I want to start, when I install a door, I want to start on the high side. In this case, this is the high side, which also happens to be the hinge side. So this is the side we're going to install first. Okay? We're going to start on the hinge side. So what we're going to do is as we start installing this door, Okay, and we, we always talk about when I'm, and when I'm installing this door and I'm nailing it into place that I start nailing at the bottom first and work my way up on the hinge side. 
nailing through the frame. And as I'm doing that, I got to make sure that my hinge side is perfectly plumb. So when I read the level, that my bubble is right in the center of those two lines. And in this case, this hinge side is perfectly plumb. Now, after I get this nailed in, or just kind of secured in place, I've got to physically go and put shims behind each hinge area. And that's why we took the casing off this side, so we can show you, we took a close up on this, so we can show you that each area behind the shim, or behind the hinge has got to be shimmed. If there's a gap in between the jam and my stud, my wall stud, I've got to shim it. I've got to put a shim in there and make sure it's pretty snug. I don't want to force the shim in there and bulge out my jam. I want to just make it snug. And the shims, if we look at a good shim here, and we pull one out for an example, uh, I'll, sh I'll show you a so side profile of this, that one side is thicker than the other. So I, these are tapered so I can slide them in there or so that I can stack them up on top of each other and then I can get a different uh, thickness as I uh, slide these two together. Okay, so I can use these shims to whatever gap I have and fill that gap with a shim. Uh, now, another thing, we've, again, we've got three areas on the hinge side. Behind each hinge, we have to shim. And we have to nail our shims into our framing, which would be our stud members, our jack stud and our king stud. And that's on both sides. I've got a jack stud here and a king stud, jack stud, king stud. I've got three inches of lumber to nail into. Okay? So we've already nailed this side in completely. Now, as we start to fasten the door, I work, I've already worked from bottom and nailed all the way up to secure this side. Now what I have to do is work around my door and nail in my top as I check my reveal and close my door. Okay? And I look at, I look at my reveal here and I make sure that it has a good reveal and that also that the top of the door is level. It's got to be level. But most importantly, it's got to be square too. The frame of the door has got to be square. In this case, it's a good example. This frame is very square. So we've now worked the hinge side and got that secure. We've worked the top of the door, or the head of the door, however you want to call it. They're both interchangeable terms. And now lastly, I take care of my latch side, or my jam side, which is my latch side. So now I've got one more spot that I is recommended to shim, and that is behind the latch. So this latch doesn't displace as this door gets slammed open, uh, or you know, just really closed or slammed again. We want to keep this latch in place, okay? And the option you have too, uh, if you want to, there's one more spot that you can shim, and that's down here at the bottom. This gets kicked a lot and hit a lot by rolling objects through the door area and bumping into it or somebody kicking it with their foot. We can shim at the very bottom, okay? So we have five spots that we can shim. Three one behind each hinge, and there's three hinges, so that takes care, of three, takes care of three of them. We've got behind the latch, which is the fourth one, and the optional one is the fifth one, and that's down here on the bottom of the latch side. 